Welcome to the Connie G Show, everybody. Today is November 24th, 2022, the year of our Lord. And thank you for joining me here on this Thanksgiving day, this Thanksgiving Thursday. I'm broadcasting um, on my acreage. I got about a tenth of an acre here in Prague, Oklahoma, and I'm in a shed, in a storage shed. So. Thank you for being inside the shed with me on this Thanksgiving day, and I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. And if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, well, you know, I hope you had a great Thursday. That's fine. I mean, that's a weird, that's a weird hill to die on, but that's okay. And I'm, I'm with you. I'm a weirdo too. Um, got a lot to get to. We have not done a show. I haven't done a show since last Thursday, which, in in the podcast universe is normal once a week is normal but in in the okay taco universe in the those guys from wichita universe in the connie g show universe in con radio universe that is not normal and uh i apologize but we've just been totally consumed with um busyness and and hurriedness, and it's been overwhelming at times. Not to the point of breaking down, but maybe getting close to those kinds of things. For and it's all self-inflicted, of course, as as is everything. So I'll get to most of that um, moving forward in tonight's show. Here over the next hour, I I do want to tell you if you want to. You know, help the show out of whatever. You don't have to help the show. I mean, who are you to help the show? You don't have to do anything. But if you want to, you can share it. You can tell people about it, and uh, th- that'd be nice. And you can watch it on YouTube on Con Radio. You can listen on iTunes or or Spotify, or on Con Radio's iTunes or Spotify, and um, or you can just go to Patreon dot com backslash con radio and and even it's gonna be free there but you can give money if you want to if you got it give it and speaking of money and speaking of people that I'd like to take a little bit of money from um, that brings me to my first topic okay so get your damn pen out and write down that I got a topic for you and that is I'm about done with Bill Gates okay listen him and his billionaire phony cronies okay. We got to take this country back. <laughs> now, I am mad at Bill Gates because that little bird man is. Why aren't people more upset at, at the usability of his systems? I mean, it seemed like when I was. When I was growing up, uh, when I was at the age, because I'm, I'm lucky or unlucky, depending on how you look at it that I got to straddle the pre-computer age, the pre, there's no reason to have, you know, I'm talking about Oregon Trail, dude. I'm talking about pre-internet, and then that's our computer, and you pay like $2,000 to play Oregon Trail. That is what computing was. I'm talking about that versus what we got now. And that Pelican Man was at the forefront of all this in his garage building you know, microprocessors or whatever and build in operating systems and okay. And I I don't you know, you you built something that, that supposedly worked, you made a Microsoft and you installed it in all these computers and everybody, you know, bought your deal and everybody used your operating system uh for the most part and damn it, you deserve to get yourself a uh Asian wife and live in the in the hills of Oregon or be the largest single landowner in the United States. I don't know what your ambitions are, Bill Gates, as you're hawking COVID vaccines and, and taking peanut butter over to the descendants overseas. I don't know what your plan is. My problem with you is dog, stop updating my system. You know, I got a 2000, excuse me, I get out here and I'm in the shed. My nose starts running. I got a 2000, probably 2011 Dell uh, laptop, and it's got a AMD chip in there. It's got a, some sort of Series 3 processor, some, some, I don't know, whatever the stickers that say things on it. 
It's got that crap in it. It's been a great little laptop. But the, the but the issue is, over the years, I've compiled numerous things onto it um, of important nature. A lot of my business stuff on there is, you know, that stuff. And then also, it's just got a lot of memories, really. A lot of memories. But every time I turn it off, because I don't like using it, because it is a, what what older people would call a piece of shit. Um, that's what that is. But every time I turn it on now, so I'll plug it in, I'll pour gas in it, you know, to kickstart it, I'll plug it in, and once it finally fires up, every time it's like, oh, I gotta update the system. How about you update when I tell you to update? Stop putting in your little tracking systems in there. Stop putting all the stuff that you're putting in. I don't want it. All I need this thing for is to run quick in 2016 and to send an email. I don't need you to update, oh, but does your world clock got a, a new face? I don't care. I'm going to have to blow my... Talk today. Excuse me. Excuse me. I didn't want to be sniffling through the whole show. I don't need a damn clock face update. I don't need a damn what whatever else you're you're hiding. You know, turn on my video recorder to listen to me as I talk to my wife in intimate moments, so you can sell me stuff. Get out of my pockets, Bill Gates. Get out of my pocket, okay? And there's a lot of billionaires I shouldn't, I shouldn't probably pick a beef with because they got billions of dollars. And a billion dollars is 999 million plus a million. And he's got multiple billions. So I get it. Dude's flush with cash. Dude could send a crony out here right now to my shed, some sort of men in black type, to put me down. But I'm saying mano a mano out of the billionaires club, I know I can take Bill Gates. And I'm talking, you could send me, you could transport Bill Gates from 1978 in his prime and that little dweeb would get a stone cold stunner. He would get a broken neck. So, stop updating my system. Be like a Mac. Here's the thing. I got a not only do I have this beautiful Macintosh that I'm talking to you right now, you know, it's, it's gorgeous. MacBook Pro for the professional cost me 0% interest. Um, it's like a 57 payment program. Pretty good. And I'll have this bad boy paid off in no time, probably four or five years getting this thing paid off. But the thing about this is you plug it in. It charges. It keeps a charge for like, I don't know three or four days, an incredible amount of time in comparison to my Dell, okay? And not just like, oh, your Dell's so old, it takes gasoline. Yeah, also my brand, if I have a brand new Dell, same thing. And I have an old, you know, an old Mac computer that we do those guys from Wichita on. That thing's so old, Wit or, um, Macintosh won't even update it. It won't allow you on Safari anymore. But... It works like a charm. I mean, it keeps trying to update Adobe, but it works like a charm. And it records. It's great. And then we just send that recording over to a different computer that can access internet. But you don't have to worry about it. Like, it won't update. It won't update unless you tell it to. I don't need you to update. I'm not doing anything. No, but by the way, when it's a personal computer, we don't need it to update. Because personally, we look at a few things. We look at social media. We look at Amazon. And we look at, we Google where shit is. That's it. That's what people use their computers for. And of course, for the adult stuff, if they're, if they're so inclined. That's it. So don't update us, okay? And you're ruining my life. And I'm tired of hearing that, oh, you have more computing power 
on your table or in your pocket than Lyndon Baines Johnson had in the entire military. No, here's the thing that old school people would do. You know what I mean? If I pulled out this computer and it's wartime, I'm talking about my Dell. If I pull out my Dell and it's wartime and I click it on because I got to fire some sort of missile strike at some sort of underdeveloped country to prove a point to the world about how powerful my country is in America. Well, if it's sitting there updating, an old school American would get on their Learjet, fly over to that country. They wouldn't sit here and wait 37 minutes, which is what I waited. 37 minutes for this piece of S to update. They would be like, I'm close the computer, put it in my bag. We'd fly over overseas to that that dwindling country and I'd take that computer on my back. I'd say, this is what I was trying to do and I'd smack some sort of world leader upside the face with it. That's old school America. So, anyways. It just gets frustrating, man. I was trying to send one email. Some dude wanted a, an estimate on something. It's like, okay, well, let me turn on my computer. He's like, well, can you get it to me by tomorrow? It's like, I don't know. It's a It's a Windows computer. So we'll see if it's done updating. Then I might be able to get it to you by tomorrow. That's crazy, dude. So give us Oregon Trail and stop trailing us, is what I would say to you, Bill Gates. Stop trailing me. Take the peanut butter to the poor. Buy your land in Nebraska. Build your robot centers or your underground layer or your space rockets or whatever the hell you and your billionaire friends do. Buy Sex Island. Do all the stuff that you guys do. But stop making it hard for us simpletons to do normal, simple, poor people stuff. That's all I'm asking on this Thanksgiving. And I'm thankful for I'm thankful for the opportunity to say that to you on a, on some platforms that you probably get rich off of. So, anyways, um, yeah, that was frustrating. But, dude, people with money are just, they're just, it's, a, it's its own bubble. Um, it is, and I'm not saying it's, in, it's a better bubble to be in. I don't think that it is entirely. I think that you float around, you got a lot of problems. And, you know, you're never happy. You know, I don't think that Bill Gates is happy or Elon Musk. I've seen Elon Musk topless. He's not happy. Um, Jeff Bezos looks like the pinky in the brain guy. He's not happy. Donald Trump's clearly not happy. So I don't think that money does that. But I was watching um, a show about rich people on HBO the other day. And it wasn't Succession, which is a series. It was uh it was a it was Hard Knocks in season with the uh, Arizona Cardinals. I'm a big Oklahoma football fan, so I have a little bit of a connection with the Kyler Murray connection. You know, you follow cuz you want to follow. And I'd been kind of putting it off cuz I thought it was I didn't realize that it was this new in-season kind of deal where they're filming it in the midst of the regular season. And so I I had avoided watching it when we subscribed to HBO Max. Recently, I avoided watching it because I already knew that the Cardinals were being, they were not very good so far this year. I didn't really want to watch the preseason version and then them thinking that, you know, Super Bowl possibilities and then knowing that they're three and six or wh- whatever they are. So I realized it was in season and so I started watching it. And it's a, it's a typical, there's a voiceover guy, there's a narrator guy that sits there and, you know, it's... The guys are trying to navigate their way to a division win. And then it cuts to a coach you guys got to get out there and i'm telling you we got a message here if you win two of the next three you know what i'm saying if you win two of the next three you hear me if you win two of the next three that's gonna put you in the champ that means that that third game see you got one that's one game two and then you got your third game if you win that third game that's gonna put you there at the top of the division so no matter how this season started no matter how it started and we, we did what we did. We did what we did. That is what it is. But if you go two out of the next three, 
then you will be you're right there. Your division yeah. Uh spoiler alert, they lost. <laughs> so it's it's so strange watching um then it'll smash cut like during the series. Like that's it'll cut to a coach doing that kind of crap. Then it cuts to a coach talking to other coaches, being like, make sure you remind these guys what they're playing for. They got their heads down right now. Make sure you remind their guys what they're playing for. It's like, how about go play your hardest because somebody is paying you millions of dollars to, to play a child's sport. So just go play and win. That's your job. That's your only job. And I know that you're playing against a bunch of guys that that's their job. So try harder. But it's tough to try, man. Not when you live a life like that. And the most ridiculous crap is in this, whatever this last episode that I just watched. And they probably air them every week or every Monday or something after after every week's Sunday night game. And this one showed Coach Cliff Kingsbury's home. It is in Arizona. It's a mansion in Arizona that overlooks Camelback Mountain. Um, and it's just a wall of windows on this mansion. And it cuts to him like it's some sort of Hanes commercial, you know, where it's like he's lounging on the, It's like, I just like it real open. You know, I've always liked it open and modern. So, like, see this wall of light? Like, I just like this natural light coming in. You know, I just keep it chill and clean. It's like, who the hell? Shut up, robot. You know, yeah, everybody would like this house, dumbass. <laughs> you know? um, it's a, you know, $7 million mansion in Arizona. Yeah, it's pretty sweet with a staff and maids and you don't have to do anything. I mean, as far as upkeep on your home. Um, yeah, it's gorgeous. I just like it open and I don't like clutter. I just like to feel, ooh, ooh, shut up. Um, and then he had a gigantic painting of a lion with a crown on it, like a king. <sighs> this dude um, was a, I mean, I'm not going to, he's a, he, he's played football, all he's known is football. So he's a, he's a cornbread idiot. Like he's never had to figure anything else out. His dad was a football coach. His dad coached him. He played high school football for his dad. He goes to college at Texas Tech. I think he probably plays under Mike Leach. And, and so he breaks all kinds of records because they were that air raid offense. He does get drafted, plays five seasons in the NFL to probably a underperforming as far as what he would want. I'm, I, I don't know if he even started uh, ever, maybe a few times. But, you know, not, I'm not taking anything away. I mean, clearly that's, you're still in a limited category. And then became some sort of offensive guru, gets hired on at Texas Tech, and, you know, was able to get Patrick Mahomes to play there. So basically his tenure at Texas Tech is with one of the, if not the greatest talent at quarterback of all time. Um, so he uses Patrick Mahomes to parlay himself into a position to get an NFL job. And... At, at some point during the, I mean, at Texas Tech, they didn't ever accomplish. I mean, they broke a lot of records as far as offense, but they didn't win a lot of games. Um, so they didn't win a championship or of any kind, not even a Big 12 championship of any kind. And so it was kind of like, why, are, why would the NFL want Cliff Kingsbury to be, I mean, he's not, He's not that good of a... Co I mean, he's not a winner. He doesn't know how to win games. And, um, yeah, he knows how to have a great quarterback, maybe. Maybe he's a great offensive mind, but he doesn't know how to win games. And then Arizona takes him, and since then, he's had, had a pretty decent season getting into the playoffs a year ago with a great offense and, and a couple good defensive players. And, okay, maybe... And then this season shows what he really is. It's like, you got the talent, man. You got to coach him. And he doesn't have that. But somewhere within his pea brain, he decided that he's a lion. And he's the king. And he believes it. And he's walking around in his linen shirt and his linen pants. And 
you know, barefoot and I just don't get much time here, to be honest with you. I don't get to I don't get to experience my house. Okay, creep. Um, but then he walks up to that lion painting, which is the size of a wall. And and it's like it's black and white with the crown like hung down over the lion's eyes. The king, you know. And he's like, you know, I'm a Leo, so you can see the you can see why I have this. It's like, what the hell is wrong? Uh, that that happened. He said that on TV. And, you know, I spit a bunch of milk through my nose, some teen milk through my nose and laughed and then moved on. But uh, good luck to him. But the real thing that I took away from watching that one episode of Arizona Cardinals Hard Knocks is this. The owner of the Arizona Cardinals, and part of it's my fault, okay, because I got confused for a second. But it, it, it doesn't mean it's not true. The owner of the Arizona Cardinals is also a pilot. And so they were talking about the owner and his schedule and all and everything that's going on. And then there's a general manager and then there's, you know, there's all kinds of layers of people getting way too much money to do to underperform at their jobs. That's that's the NFL. At every level. And then you never get fired because when you get fired, you get the payout and then somebody else hires you. So everybody's making so much money. Except for, well, not even except for. The owners are making money regardless. But, so this owner, they're talking about his schedule. He's like, yeah, I got to fly over here for this corporate meeting and then I'll fly back um, to Arizona for the game. And for whatever reason, in my mind, I was like, holy crap. <laughs> you know, that's kind of cool that the owner flies his own team plane with the team in it. You know what I mean? Like, because there's a few stories in history where the owners of, or the, a plane carrying a team of people will crash. Like, uh, I know that Michigan State football team, like the we are, or no, the Marshall. We are Marshall. That plane crashed. And it's like, that's so crazy that, I mean, it's really sad. And Wichita State's football team um, crashed like that way back when. And it's just insane to think that. And then I was thinking, like, that's so weird that this billionaire, I'm assuming billionaire owner, is just flying his players to their games and then watching them like a dad. You know what I mean? Like, I'll take the kids there. You know, come on, little buddy. Get on the plane. I'm, I'm the owner. And I'll take all of you guys. And then I realized he was not flying the team to their next destination. Or maybe he was. I, I don't know. I kind of lost. I turned it off. But it's just weird. It would be weird if if the owner was flying. I don't know. So anyways, that's just, that's one, another billionaire. And I could probably beat him up too. And I don't know what connection he has with Microsoft in the Windows update. Just bring back Windows Vista. Everybody loved that. Let's bring that back. That'd be good. So, um, yeah, it's been a, just a, uh, a stressful week down here. <sighs> so, A couple weeks ago, you know, the question gets asked, and it's always a big question in our family. I have, a, I have a large family. I have seven siblings, and most of those siblings have, all of them have lives, and then most of them have, like, kids and husbands and, and partners and live in different states and all that kind of crap as that happens as people get older, you know? So it's just like, Thanksgiving and any holiday and then you got the in-laws where my mother-in-law and father-in-law you know they live three and a half hours away and it's just like for the past 15 years and regardless of whether we were living down here or or living in Hayesville or living in Heston uh, Kansas where 
wherever we were, it was always, you know, you find out who is hosting Thanksgiving and then our family would be the one that would be like, well, whatever, we'll be there. We'll see you there. You know, and that's fine. And it makes more sense because it's just, we're the ones that, you know, moved to Oklahoma or we're the ones that moved to Heston or we're the ones that did all that. So, um, let's see. Oh, I just got a text from my uncle. All right. Well, we'll see. Um, He's he's coming to respond to that probably pretty soon. But a couple weeks ago, my wife's like, well, what do you want to do? I don't want to ask, but what do you want to do for Thanksgiving? Because we're just totally consumed in trying to get this this taco shop up and going. And I was like, I don't want to deal with, you know, going to my dad's one day, going to my mom's one day, going to the in-laws and scheduling all three and, and, and all that and sleeping in three different beds or two different beds and all that traveled and drive back down here and get back to work. It's like, just tell them to come down here. If they want to come do Thanksgiving, fine. We're doing it here. Cause nobody really had any concrete plans. That was the, another big reason. Cause as, as our family has aged, you know, and I come from a broken home, you know, all those traditions started kind of fallen it used to always be thanksgiving and christmas were at my grandma so you know or they were always at my in-laws on this day or whatever it was and you know all that stuff started to wane and it's like no screw it just tell them we're doing it here we're doing it at the taco shop and that was the dumbest thing i'd ever said in my life (laughs) that was dumb so since i said that and everybody's like okay (laughs) Now I'm just talking about siblings and, and my dad and, and my in-laws, basically. But, you know, that's still 20 people or so, 30 people. And it's like, I'm looking at this this building that's, I mean, we're working. You know, we got 58 different projects going at once, you know. So there's stuff all over the outside. There's stuff. And you just, and you can only do what you can do. It's only me and Shannon, and you can only do what you can do. And so, you know, even to this week, up until Wednesday, yesterday, we didn't have a bathroom. We didn't have a toilet. You know what I mean? We didn't have a sink in the bathroom. We didn't have a wall in case somebody had to go to the bathroom. You know, and it's like, and nobody knows any of that stuff, and that's fine, and it's not their fault. But just put this tremendous amount of pressure on me. Not. At first, it was like I wanted it all to be clean, and eventually I had to give up on that. It's like I can't even get to the, can't clean the floor if I'm still pouring concrete. You know, the concrete dust is in this whole building. And so, you know, you just kind of have to start picking and choosing and then doing what you can do. And, you know, it got to a point where it's like, okay, here, it'll work. You know, I got a toilet. It's not the way we want it. It's not the way it should have been. We're going to have to redo some stuff and all this other that nobody really noticed or said anything, even if they did notice. But the part that kind of sucks is you, you kept this whole thing under wraps as far as I didn't tell my family, you know, what color, what I'm doing, what it looked like before. Nobody really knows. My dad knows because he's seen it and my grandpa's seen it, you know, so they can be like, oh, man, they've done a lot of work. I don't know how much they even remember, you know, and then nobody's been within it. So as the person, who's been doing it, you sit back and be like, man, people are going to be impressed with what we've done, even if the floor is dirty. And then they walk in, they're like, yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, they have no idea what it looked like before. Because now it just looks like it worked in, like you're just working on something. And it's like, no, we've done a lot. Really? Yeah, I can tell. Sure. And it, it's fine. I'm not, it's my own fault, you know, for not being the kind of type that just shares every step of every project you know but uh it was you know, there's no context to it and so when they see it they're like okay yeah lights work and it's like yeah that didn't that wasn't happen you know you got lights in here yeah that wasn't the case when we bought it we didn't have a ceiling it's all hanging down you know so but we got it going and um 
it worked. And I didn't, unfortunately, just, you know, then also because we're hosting it, my wife's got the responsibility, which she does enjoy cooking Thanksgiving dinner. She's really great at it. But, you know, her parents wanted her to go up the weekend prior to celebrate her birthday with them. And which is understandable, but it's like, I'm thinking like, girl, we got till Thursday and we got a lot to do and I could use you down here, you know, and they'll see you then and all that kind of crap. But so she was gone and we may do. And so she, but she couldn't help me this week because now you're prepping and cooking and, you know, all that stuff. So it, it all turned out fine. It all was fine. I'm just. You just get exhausted because it's almost like you're rushing to open. And uh, that's not what we're doing, but it's that same feeling a little bit. And, you know, in in the midst of that, I also, it's just been a horrible sleeping arrangements recently, um, whether <clears throat> just working too late or, you know, this week's just been awful. I think one of the nights my daughter climbed in bed at some point, I didn't get any sleep that night. And then the next night, my son, I wanted, I felt bad for my son and not spending time and all that stuff. And he's on Thanksgiving break and I'm going to be buried in this building. And so I was like, well, why don't you come hang out with me all day? And then we'll, we'll camp out in the taco shop, which was dumb, you know? So we camp out and, it's one of those deals where I have to like tell him to set a timer because I won't stop working. You know, I won't just be like, I'm done. And so he set a timer. It's funny because he set one and at like eight 30 at night, dad, it's eight 30. He told me to set the timer. It's like, yeah, son, let me finish this one thing. Set it for an hour more, you know, then set it for an hour more and you end up crawling onto an air mattress in a dirty taco shop. That's haunted at midnight. And being like, I guess I'll go to sleep. You know, you're covered in paint. You haven't worn any clean clothes in a month. And, you know, you wake up the next morning and just start again. There's nothing. That's stupid. People should have to drive to work. Don't wake up at work. You know, it's already bad enough when it's on your mind and you wake up thinking about what you have to do. Like, uh uh-oh, like solving problems. But sleeping there and getting up is very stressful sleep. I will tell you that. So. That's been this week, dude. It's just been crazy. So that's why. And it's not been any better for Shannon. It's been worse. Been worse. Um, And I don't know. I think we're going to try to get back up to Wichita tomorrow to do those guys from Wichita. Um, But I don't know. You know, I'll let him. He's had a rough week, too. One of his dogs got hit with the with the car um it wasn't like a giant person grabbing a car and throwing out his dog it was a driver and so that then and then vehicle problems for his daughter has just been one of those deals so we'll see how much we go into that uh on a episode of okay taco or on those guys tomorrow oh um I did have a funny thought. I I think. It's not even really funny. It's just an observation. But. um, When you've been married. And have children. That that goes into it too. But as as the. Father. Or as the dad. Or as the husband. You don't really realize um, you you just don't realize the flow, the daily flow, basically, not the monthly flow. you keep that to yourself ladies the the daily flow is you know, and you get in a rhythm and you just go with it as far as you, as much as you can, and I love my wife and I love my children so much and I feel like I think I have a lot of guilt for the amount of time I spent away from them 
when we were building the trailer for those year, you know, I mean, and, and building that business. And, and so now that they're here and closer and, and we're building this and we're not like stuck in the operation side, we're not running it yet. I feel guilty if I don't see them every day or, or spend some time with them. And, you know, I don't, they're also at an age where you don't get many more years left where they're going to want that. And they really want it now. And so, you know, I, I do my best to try to balance that. That's why we have camp outs and that's why we do all that, even though it wrecks you physically and emotionally sometimes. It's and it's exhausting, but it's worth it. And hopefully it creates some memories. But um, when my wife took the kids up to Kansas last weekend for her birthday celebration, like I told you, you know, I had a couple evenings where I'm alone and it wasn't me that was leaving. You know, I've had those evenings before where this whole summer, I mean, this whole year when I've been driving up every week to Kansas to to do my other job, every, you know, on the weekends and staying at a couple different houses and it's been exhausting. That's its own thing, but it's a little bit different when the wife and kids are going and I don't, you know, my only obligation is to worry about this, working on this business, you know, and what I realized is there's this difference between men and women when their spouse is gone and especially when, when the kids are gone, because that's a big thing too, because you, you just act different when they're there. But like when I knew that my wife and kids were not going to be home and I come home at eight thirty nine o'clock after working on the shop all day, I'll walk in and I'll, you know, it's like, what do I want for dinner? And I'll get it all out. And I was just eating um, French fries basically all week last week. So I'll get the air fryer down. I'll take some frozen fries out. I'll throw a handful of fries in there. But I'll leave a cabinet open and I'll get the salt out and I'll leave it out and I'll go get my uh, lemonade and I'll leave the pitcher out and I'll open the drawer for the forks and I'll leave it open. And so, you know, and I don't have to say anything to anybody. Like when I get the air fryer down, I know what I'm doing with it. But when you're married and you get something down, at least in my life, my wife's like, what are you doing with the air fryer? It's like, Making fries? Oh, you could have told me. I might. She might be real sweet like that. You could have told me. I'll make you some. It's like, it's okay. I, I'll make some fries. I'm just making some fries. It's not a big deal, you know. But if I get the salt out and I leave the door, the little cupboard door that's that that the salt lives in, you know, a little salt house. If I leave that door open, she might walk into the kitchen and be like, "Hey, why is this door open?" I'm like, well, because I got the salt out. She's like, well, yeah, but did you use it? I'm like, yeah. But why didn't you put it back and close it yet? It's like, I just haven't yet. I mean, I will. At some point, I will do that. But, you know, who cares right now? And it's it's just so funny that it's like, as I was going about my evening, for two, for a couple of evenings, I just started realizing, like, that's what my existence is with my fa- with my family and then when they're not around nothing changes as far as what I'm doing the only difference is I don't have to narrate what I'm doing when I'm alone I just do it and then when they're here all that happens is somebody it's like somebody's watching the Conrad movie and they're they're talking at the screen you know, and, and I have to stop my movie and be like, I'm doing this, you know, and they'll be like, oh, okay, I'll keep watching. <laughs> so you got the lemonade out. Why did you get the lemonade out? I'm going to make a drink. Oh, okay. Why didn't you put it back yet? Because I might have another drink and I don't mind if it's a little bit warmer and I'll put it back when I'm completely done. Because that's the way I operate. It's like, I want to go get all my stuff make it, whether it be dinner or whatever it is, make it, and then put it up once. And I don't care if when I walk in to 
pull my french fries out of the air fryer. I don't care that, you know, there's a, a crystal light packet there or there's a lemonade jar there. I don't care. And then I'll go eat my fries. And then I'll be like, okay, that was good. And then I'll be like, okay, it's about bedtime. All right, I'm going to go take a, I'm gonna go take a, a nighttime nap. I'm going to go put that stuff up now. Walk in, air fryer's now cool. Push it, put it up. Put the salt back in the salt house. Close the door. Grab the ketchup and the mustard and the sour, whatever I wanted to put on the fries tonight. Put them back in the fridge. You know, it's not a constant just motion of, hey, can you grab the ketchup? Did you want ketchup? Are you going to need ketchup? Are you done with the ketchup? Hey, babe, are you done with the air fryer? Are you going to have more because it's still out? Hey, are you done with this? Are you going to keep doing this? Are you going to? It's like. And what I realized, though, is even though that sounds like I'm complaining about it. It's okay. You know, it's still it's just funny to me because. It's almost like when there's a um, when you're in a relationship and. See, my wife would be like, oh, my husband's not here, so he's not going to turn on Hard Knocks or whatever stupid show that he's going to turn on, some documentary that that I don't want to watch. So I'm just going to sit back. I'm going to get me a little glass of wine. I'm going to read my novel. You know, that's my wife. That's like what she would do. And I'm like, that's no, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to, you know, turn on this show that you hate that that I like or something and watch it and eat on the bed, you know, that's my, so you have two different visions of what this weird little escape from, uh, matrimony is. But, and then it goes like, if there was, if I did have the energy or the, um, like the drive or something to have like a boys night, (laughs) Because people do that. People will have like a boys night or a girls night, ladies night. And I think that ladies go out there and they have fun. They're like, let's dance. Let's just drink. Let's just drink our faces off and and get an Uber and dance. And I don't care. And oh, it's just good to just not have to worry, you know, whatever. And I think guys are just like, I think they go crazy sometimes because they get to a bar with their buddies. And they go, I'll have a, I'll have a Guinness. And nobody at the table will be like, why'd you order that? Whereas if, and that's the only freedom of the guy, that's why they end up like binge drinking and doing all that stuff. Because they realize they say, I'll have a Guinness and nobody says anything. They're like, what? I didn't get the question of, oh, do you like Guinness? Yeah. I, I mean, I felt like ordering Guinness. Oh, really? I didn't know you like Guinness. When did you start liking that? Should I start buying that? It's like, I don't know. I mean, I'm just, I ordered one. I'm not married. You know, I, no, I don't have to buy it. I'm, we're just at a bar. Oh, okay. I'm just saying, I didn't know you liked it. I do like it. I do like it. Oh, so I should, should I get some out? Now I don't like it anymore. You know, that kind of, thing. which is stupid. I get it. But I think when guys are sitting around with their friends, that's why they end up being like, I'll be Guinness and nobody says anything. The waitress comes back around like, you guys need anything else? I'll have another Guinness. And nobody's like, oh, really? You know, you usually don't have to. Are you feeling, what's, what's going on? It doesn't have to mean anything. It's just like, I'm just doing this. Like, this is what I'm doing right now. So, I don't know if any of that makes sense. But, um, I'll, I missed them. I missed them more than, than I enjoyed the freedom. Even if I had to answer a question about are you going? Are you going to the bathroom? Yeah. Are you going to the bathroom? Can you? Um, hey, can you? Do you mind if I have popcorn? <laughs> no. Do what you want. So, it's fun. Um, but I just noticed that that it was different. Um, another show I probably watched that my wife I know didn't enjoy. Uh, was this documentary called? Say Hey, Willie Mays. It's on HBO. And I, the reason I got HBO is I wanted to watch this documentary about George Carlin. It's like, and I don't know if I watched it. And I, anyways, but I noticed that this Say Hey, Willie Mays was on. 
and I like sports documentaries, and I and I enjoy baseball to a certain extent. And you know, everybody knows Willie Mays, but I don't know. You know, you just know that there's that's Willie Mays. It's kind of like I watched the one on um, Nolan Ryan. I, dude, Nolan Ryan could have could so have sold me insurance. I don't. I've I had no idea what that dude even looked like when I watched that documentary, and I was like, "Holy crap, that's Nolan Ryan!" You know that kind of thing. Like I had a whole I thought he was black. <laughs> I had no idea. Um, he's not, but Willie Mays is, and I just like the the story sometimes because it, on sports documentaries, the cool thing is they it breaks it all down. You don't have to go through their whole career. You're not living through it, so you just got the highlights and then what they actually accomplished. And I really enjoyed the fact that. Um, I just bobbed old you right there. I had my uh my thumb on my, my hand when I made that point. I really enjoyed. Let me tell you about this, America. Um, the fact that Willie Mays was in it, I enjoyed that. So whenever they filmed this, he was still alive and and telling his story. And you know, the most one is the dude was probably the greatest baseball player of all time. Uh. And I know that every documentary will make it seem like the person that they're documenting is the greatest of all time. But just the amount of, you know, just the all-stars and the golden gloves and the fielding and the hitting and all of that, if you combine all that and just, and, and the fact that he went and played for the Army, he had to be drafted or enlist into the Army during the war and they allowed him with his special talents to be able to basically perform um, as entertainment baseball for the army and the Marines and the Navy and stuff. I think he missed a season or two doing that. And he still holds probably a lot of records, I would think. And, and was an incredible ball player, not just for at the era, but for of any time, I think he would have been just as successful, if not more especially if he didn't have to commit his efforts into other things throughout his career and throughout his prime. But what bothered me a little bit about the documentary is, you know, when you're talking about African Americans and their um, inclusion into the Major League Baseball from the time when it was segregated and there was the Negro league and you know, it was just such a different time. Well, I understand that I could never, I understand that I could never understand the kinds of, um, social and cultural pressure that would be on somebody at that time. You know what I mean? At, in, in that era. And, you know, there's like, it's almost like the black people that were talking about Willie Mays during this show were like, yeah, he was following a blueprint of Jackie Robinson of like this clean cut. And yeah, yeah, he's black, but he's okay with me, you know, that kind of thing. And it's like, maybe he was, or maybe that's just him. You know, part of me is like, I feel like sometimes people will try to push their message and what they would have done onto somebody. And it's like, maybe Willie Mays just wanted to play baseball. And, and, but their biggest beef was he played for this team in high school. Like he was a young kid playing for basically a professional baseball team or a semi-pro or professional Negro league team. He was playing for and he was amazing. I mean, they won the championship. He helped them win a championship in their league. And that's what caught the eye of um, the major leagues, and they they brought him up. And there was a person that was commenting on this show that they felt like it was insulting that Major League Baseball was going through these other leagues and picking out the best players and bringing them to the major leagues. Because once they took the best players off these teams, people didn't want to watch these teams anymore because the best players are gone. 
And they were like mad that, hey, why did you not, why did you take Willie Mays off the Barons or whoever it was on and not take the rest of the team and the general manager? Why did you not take them? Clearly they're good. And it's like, mm, that's not how it works. I mean, I, I, I can kind of see both sides of the quarter here, bud, but the when you're talking about building an example, building what you think is the best baseball players, and you're you're now integrating races and, and none of that stuff, you know, you're trying to make sure that none of that stuff matters. You just want the best ball player on your team. You're not going to, like, if I played for the Wichita Wingnuts, some sort of double-A team, feeder team, you know, to whoever, the Royals or whoever it is, and I was good enough to get called up, like, the rest of the team, what are you talking about? The best players go. Not the best, like the best player and his team goes. It has nothing to do, I mean, I don't know. Is it, it's like, well, and that's what killed the Negro. It's like, don't we want the Negro League to not exist in the sense of, wouldn't we rather just have one league with just the best players, regardless of race? I mean, that's that would be pro- progress, maybe. And I get it that, that some of the people that, formally did have a team to play for now they do not because all the best players are gone but that just means that you weren't good enough to play and that's a realization all of us have to accept at some point regardless of what we look like you're not good enough unless you're willing to be good enough and are you willing to be good enough no well then you can't complain and um i don't know that was just weird that's I don't know. Maybe I probably, I'm sure I see it in a different way. It seemed that Willie Mays saw it in the same way, but it's almost like if he agrees with me, like it's because he's, I don't know. It's just a weird thing where it's like, you don't have to put a spin on this. This dude is an amazing player, did amazing things and, and did it in a time when that was really difficult to do even more so than it is now as a black man. And he did it. Can we just be like, that was amazing. And instead it's got to be, but if they would have done, it's, they didn't. They, unfortunately, bud, they didn't. They did not do it that way, the way that you think it would have been better. Here's what did happen. That dude made it and then was the highest paid baseball player as a black guy in a time when black people weren't respected the way that they should be. That's incredible. That's awesome. And I think it paved the way. I don't know. I hope that it paved some sort of way for others to follow and it must have in his footsteps you know so it was a good documentary regardless of and I don't know if Willie Mays is even invested in Microsoft or if he would have punched Bill Gates but I guarantee you Willie Mays is of the time where he would not have spent 33 minutes trying to update his stupid computer to send an email he would have been like no and I just did that so Anyways, um, let's see if I got anything else I do, but I'm trying to save some stuff for uh, the show tomorrow, which is dumb. I should just let it out, but one thing that I was, um, if I'm just going to throw out beefs and, and TV beefs, I'll throw this out there. I'm scrolling through YouTube TV which I got to be the only person that's ever said that. And I scroll down to the bottom. I mean, really, I'm getting, I'm past Billiards TV. I'm past Alibaba. I'm past, I mean, I'm down there on YouTube TV. I'm in live and I'm down there. And there's a channel that's by Fox Business or Fox Nation, which is a subsidiary company, company of Fox. So you know they're trustworthy. But the, the, the channel's name is Live Now. It's called Live Now. I think it's Fox Business, Live Now, or Fox Nation, Live Now. And I click on it because it was a White House press meeting. And sometimes those can be funny. Like people will ask ridiculous questions that are, are uh, leading, you know. And then that woman or the man or whoever's the press secretary for the White House has to sit there and try to 
field those questions and shield herself and 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 President Biden or whoever whoever from any kind of responsibility in the question. It's a very entertaining thing at times. I'm like, what? There's a White House press. I mean, because it was late. I'm like, there's a White House press meeting going on right now. I'll click on it. I mean, you know, it's 1030 at night. What what could this be about? And clearly it must be live because it's on live now. Click on it. And now it's like I'm watching live now. I'm watching a White House press briefing. And up on the top left, it says previously recorded. And it's like, don't brand your channel live now and then just show previously recorded. Like, the only angle you have is that it's live now. If you're just throwing up previously recorded stuff, you're not, you're nothing. You're not live now at all. So don't be, that's real weird. And now it made me check out. I could not enjoy the, the comedy of the comedy of people in suits that don't do anything except talk about how they're affecting others who do stuff. You know, I, that's funny to me. I'm going to report like, that's what this whole thing's built on. I mean, it's built on people that get elected to then tell, set rules for people that actually do. There's the doers and then there's the rule setters and these rule setters never were the doers. They weren't that. They always want to be rule setters. What they do is learn how to be rule setters. And they get into that position and then they make a bunch of rules that suck. And so then you got a bunch of people that sit in a little folding chairs and they go, why'd you make this rule? And that person goes, we made it because we felt like it affected this thing and we think it's the right decision. And it's like, but it's really killing these other people. And then somebody else is like, but it's a good rule. And, you know, it's, it sucks. How about this? Just stop. Stop it. Just stop. Everybody go do something. Telling other people who are doing how to do it is not doing something. That's, that's where we're at. Um, so anyways, yeah, hoping to get up to Wichita tomorrow um, to do those guys from Wichita. And, and um, we'll just go from there, dude. It's been a long week. Sorry that that we we weren't able to get more shows out to you um i will tell you this that the the cove for okay taco show is being built you know it's in the works so we got a little studio thing going we're making progress um so we'll figure it out but uh thank you for listening and we'll be back uh tomorrow just you know do your best to tell people we're out here doing this thing and um I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. All of you people who are already supporting um, Con Radio or this show with Connie G Show or or the OK Taco Show or or any of the other shows that we got going on, thank you. And I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. All of you people who have not, I hope, you, I hope your Thanksgiving was awful. <laughs> Just kidding. Consider it and, uh, you know, I still hope you had a great Thanksgiving. So. Be thankful, get fat on turkey, and um, be happy that you're here. So love yourself. Don't let your meat loaf. Have an okay day.